What is the new world preparing for the ones who are now very rich and think only of themselves alone, those who deal in millions while the majority of people remain poor? Are earthly resources being depleted? Will anything change for the very rich and the very poor? This is quite a hot topic that is currently being very much discussed, especially lately, during and post-pandemic, and the environmental agenda. But we, of course, approach these questions not from a social, but a magical point of view. And we will try to reason about this topic. It seems to me that the question carries a few erroneous assumptions that are nowadays perceived by many as a certain unshakable factor. Some things are just believed in without being questioned, like for example the fact that the resources of Earth are running out. Whether they truly are depleting or not, only Earth would know, not man. Therefore, it is better for us not to operate with certain concepts, which we probably are incapable of telling for sure that they are true. Because telling the truth is for us an indispensable starting position. Or at least telling the truth about what you know for sure. Yes, this world and its social environment itself, the social coating, are organized in a manner containing vividly pronounced social polarities. There are very rich people, there are very poor people, as well as something intermediate between them, the latter being a majority. But these two extremes do very much stand out and create the impression that this world is in some way unjust. But if we observe it in its entirety, and not only focus on extremes, if we observe it in its entirety, not only based on the present day, but also considering historical processes that can be embraced with our memory, attention and knowledge, we will probably see that all of it is far from being this certain. Although such a problem does exist, although this problem is perhaps individual for everyone, there are people who achieve a certain level of success, how they do it, is another issue, each one has his own way. Fact is that somehow they did it. Some used the resources of the system, some its imperfections, some used knowledge about this system, some used its needs. In any case, those who have achieved something, on the contrary to those who didn't, dare to take action. We will not consider the moral and ethical side of these actions. Why not? Because they achieved a result. This means that the system, this coating, is organized in a way that didn't prevent this result from happening and provided them with an opportunity to achieve this result and consolidate it in some way. As a counterweight, we may say that people that didn't manage to achieve didn't dare to do something that would have elevated them to a certain societal level. They weren't able to take this bold action for some reason. What is the reason? Well, this is the main question. What is the reason why some achieve a result and others don't? And this reason, colleagues, is always found within and not externally. Because on the outside, no one helps anybody. What we have outside is the coating in which we are living. This coating creates the scenario, whereas how you will choose to hustle in this scenario, this concerns exclusively you alone. Say, the inner scenario that is within the general scenario in many ways depends on the person herself. And what does it depend on? Well, first of all, on the said ability to dare to take action. We live now in a changing world. And it is not changing in general for everybody. It is changing for each one individually and for each one in its own time and within its own key.
What does this change depend on? We used to live in a system and still are living out its last remaining, so to say, episodes, a system that was averaged, meaning that there were the same uniformed laws for everyone, the same rules for everyone, a shared scenario with shared institutions and the same requirements from everyone. Everything was the same for everyone, and very few happened not to fall under the jurisdiction of these laws, systems, and institutions. Why weren't they under their jurisdiction? Because they were independent from them. But these are a minority, and in fact belong to the two categories named by our colleague, the very rich and the very poor. All of them didn't land under the domain of these institutions. Some of them simply ignored them, and the others, well, they didn't manage to take all the necessary opportunities that were offered by these social institutions. And a greater chance of success will belong to those who don't just know how to use these institutes properly, but who are not dependent on them. As an example, let's analyse the situation of the former Soviet Union, where many of the present here used to live. A gigantic empire fell apart, its institutes used to be solid and unshakable. The ones who depended on these institutes got a lot of problems when they all fell apart all at once. But nonetheless, if they managed to survive, and maybe even come to gain during this destruction, then they received this enormous injection, an injection that consists of knowing that no institute, no system exists forever, and that in this world you can count only on yourself alone. There is even a saying which states that in the consciousness of a Russian person, the strictness of law is compensated by its non-mandatory execution. People who didn't experience such a system breakdown in their lifetime, respectively, didn't receive this injection, unless they artificially introduced it to themselves by force, unless they were able to prove to themselves that any social institution is merely an instrument and not an instruction to take action. Someone who complains about the unfairness of this world doesn't consider this world an instrument. He considers it a system that one cannot escape. He considers this system as something firm and irremovable, something that must and will always exist. Whereas someone who doesn't look at the system that way has a greater chance of using it as an instrument at his own discretion. And in the new system of reality, the one that each will build for themselves, these institutions are unnecessary. They will not be tying your hands and feet in an attempt to prove that without me, without the government, without religion, without any other egregorial system, you, human, aren't capable of anything at all. The ones who have been working with me for some time know this rule. Each time we meet, each lesson, practice and mystery, in one way or another, we set the necessity of freeing ourselves from these strong ties. Ties that pin down one's hands and feet and say that without me, you human mean nothing. With me, you have a social status and a future. Without me, you have no status. Look at that outcast. He has no ties with me. Look at him. You don't want to be like that, do you? Sure, you don't. Therefore, respect my rules, respect my laws, respect my social norms, and you'll have everything as it is accustomed in our society. And that's how it was. The more legalized, the more civilized society is. 
I take civilized in quotation marks, the more it bounds, making a person practically addicted to social institutes. These social institutions are very comfortable, but to our greatest misfortune, their flip side is that they take away our freedom, the freedom to live without them. This skill, this ability comes only when the understanding appears that they are a tool and not the actual coating, not a necessary environment. When a person starts thinking according to these categories, then questions about the justice of this world stop coming up. We start seeing that each person is a creator that shapes his own fate. There are those who achieved success and at some point dared to take action, and then there are those who weren't capable of such action. But where was that limit, that line which some of them crossed and others didn't? That limit and line which seemed to have proved to those who couldn't cross it that it is impossible to change something in your life on your own and they stopped trying. They have put their trust in all the institutes that are present here. I repeat, the injection received by those who lived in the destroyed empire, who were humiliated in every possible sense, socially and morally, those people now have a greater amount of survivability and success than the ones who didn't receive this injection. This is why, if you don't want to die along with the dying world, you will be revising all your social ties every day. Every day you will ask yourself, what is it in this social world you cannot live without? What binds me, what holds me, what shackles me and keeps me attached? And so, when you are working with this list of personal vulnerabilities daily and systemically, you'll never ask yourself the question the same way our colleague just did. What will happen to the very rich? Anything that they wish for, that is what will happen. Same as with you. Depending on your ability to build your own reality without relying on the destroyed institutes. Because if someone has come to be rich by relying only on these social institutes, he will cease being rich as soon as these institutes are destroyed because they work as the main support. And if the very poor couldn't make it only because he wasn't supported by the institutions, then he still won't be able to do anything, because he knows that the only way to receive support is through social institutions. Take social benefits, pensions, all government help that he can't live without. He just doesn't know how to do it. He is not used to it. He hasn't been taught. He just doesn't have the skill to count on himself alone. As strange as it might seem, they both are vulnerable in the same way. Because they depend on something that is actually a tool. Can you really be dependent on a tool? A tool is something to be used, not to be dependent on. Onu can be dependent only on a supportive foundation. And it is only you who can provide this supportive foundation, you individually, your own consciousness, and your deep understanding of the world that you want to build around you. The rest depends only on your personal abilities and not on the abilities of the environment around you. The environment will be just as you need it to be, depending on what you will fill it with. 
Whereas, if it is the environment that is dictating your future needs, your future desires to you, it means you are dependent on it, because you can't even control that. Earth and its resources are infinite, and the person who lives on it will receive as much as it is needed, today, here, and now, and tomorrow. He will receive as much as needed tomorrow, here and now, wherever it is he happens to live, and the amounts that are needed. The fact that the environmental agenda and this new social trend failed to correctly describe their paradigm about the fact that man consumes more than he can digest, it is because they couldn't find the right words to describe what's happening. Human overconsumption is truly bothersome. This overconsumption has become a necessity, even though it is not a necessity at all. But it has become a habit. A habit that, again, has been created by social institutions. One should gradually get rid of these habits, and many have already started to do so. Actually, every day more and more people are doing this. I will repeat myself. They simply fail to correctly formulate their point of view, as well as the reasons and ways they are going about it. People are trying to find a mutually shared worldview paradigm, and this is their greatest problem. Because the worldview paradigm in the new world will be individual for every person, and only those who were able to define it for themselves quite precisely have a chance to unite with people who similarly were able to define it quite precisely for themselves. Those who didn't borrow a foreign paradigm just because it is generally accepted this way and therefore safe, and instead endured all the obstacles in order to create their own, renouncing everything including the foreign worldview paradigm and proved their right to freedom to have their own personal convictions. And that is the only way to get an opportunity to build your own personal reality. And an excess of ties to social institutions will in this case work as an evaluation criterion. If you can't live without them, then you are a slave to society a slave to a dying system. If you can live without them, you are free, and the dying system will not take you with it, will not drag you to the altar as a sacrifice to itself, just to live a little bit longer at the expense of your time. No, in such a case, it will not take, will not drag you with it. Whereas those who can't live apart from society, those who are used to living according to a plan dictated by society, they will lay their heads on the altar of the dying system because it needs time to exist. Its own time is over, but you have some left, and this means it will take it away from you and you will be giving it away in exchange for these tools that you wrongfully consider a supportive foundation. Such will be my answer to your question, colleague Eric. Therefore, what will happen to the very rich and the very poor has no meaning at all and does not depend on whether they are very rich or very poor at this moment. Because if they lack the inner axis and don't have their own position and world view, then everything will be just the same for them. They will end up slaves to a dying system that will exist thanks to their very limited lifetime.